Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper from Princeton Spine and Joint Center with your daily crazy patient story and the lessons that we can all learn from it. Now, this one happened to the cousin of a doctor that I work with. The patient's name was not Stephen, but let's call him Stephen so I don't have to keep calling him the patient of a colleague, or the cousin of a colleague. So Stephen was in his early 70s at the time and he had very bad right knee pain. So Stephen went to his doctor his doctor took x-rays of his knees and his hips, and the doctor told him that his knee was fine, but the pain was really being referred from his hip. And the surgeon then scheduled Stephen on the spot for a total hip replacement. Well, Stephen told the story to my colleague's sister. My colleague's sister, to her everlasting credit, said that something sounded wrong, so she got Stephen, who actually lived a fair distance, to hop on a train uh, and come a few hours to see um, our office for a second opinion. He ended up seeing me. When I saw him, it was obvious from a clinical perspective that his pain was really coming, like he said, from his knee, which is where you know he felt the pain. Now, it's not that pain in the knee can't be referred from the hip. It, it certainly can, although it's, it's rare. Um, and sure enough, just as Stephen's surgeon had said, the, the x-rays showed that the right knee had only mild arthritis, whereas the right hip had severe arthritis. But when you move Stephen's leg around, it became really clear that the pain really was coming from his knee. And you have to remember, you can have a terrible looking x-ray and have no pain, or a great looking x-ray and have terrible pain, depending on if the body has responded to those degenerative changes with an inflammatory response. So to confirm my suspicion, as well as to help Stephen out and get him on the path to getting better, I injected his right knee with lidocaine and steroid. The lidocaine was a diagnostic challenge. When the lidocaine was in his knee, all of his pain went away. Now this would be inexplicable unless the source of his pain was really his knee. If the source of his pain were his hip and I injected his knee with numbing medicine, he would have the same pain after I injected him uh, unless he had some ridiculous placebo response from the procedure. But realistically, when you block a structure with, with lidocaine, with, with, with numbing medicine, this is the best way that we can confirm a pain's pathologic source. We numb it up, if the pain goes away, we found it. If the pain's the same after we numb it, we didn't find it. Now I also had put the steroid in so that when the lidocaine wore off, the steroids could kick in and take down the inflammation, which would give him hopefully enough pain relief to do his therapeutic exercises, uh, which ideally would then keep the pain from returning, which is, is what ended up happening. But for our purposes, here are the lessons that we can draw from Stephen's trials and tribulations with his knee. First, remember we have to treat people and not just their x-rays or MRI. Stephen had a bad x-ray of his hip, but it was asymptomatic, it wasn't bothering him. His knee x-ray was pretty good for a 70 plus year old, but his knee was still very painful and it needed to be treated. And doctors need to keep this front and center in their mind, but patients need to be aware of it too, if only to help doctors when sometimes they might forget. We have to treat people and not just their films. And second, I hate to speak ill about other doctors, but in this particular case, Stephen's surgeon deserves that in spades. It was obvious uh, that Stephen had just unfortunately wandered into the wrong office and gotten a surgeon who wanted to do surgery uh, for all the wrong reasons, right? His, his, basically, the, his knee looked okay, didn't, clearly didn't need surgery. Uh, his hip was severely arthritic, and could be, you could make a case for, for replacing it if you thought it was symptomatic. Now, thank goodness that Stephen came to us for a second opinion, and also thank goodness that surgeons like that are a rarity. Basically, every surgeon that I know um, would never dream of doing that, right? They want good outcomes, and so they, they pick the right patients for the, for the right reasons. Uh, and they, they aren't gonna do, gonna do surgeries for the wrong reasons, um, really, ever. But just like in any profession, whether it's plumbers, dark doctors, architects, seamstresses, whatever, right? There, there are going to be some bad apples mixed in, and that's just part of the human condition. And we just need to be aware of that. And when something doesn't sound right, uh, we need to get another opinion. Our, our final lesson from Stephen's case is that it brings up a great example of how we sometimes need to use lidocaine injections to help figure out what's causing someone's pain. So let, let's go back to Stephen's situation for, for a moment. When I saw him, it seemed clear to me that what, that what was causing his pain was his knee, right? But, and this is a very important but, if I had injected his knee and he hadn't felt better from the lidocaine, then I would have had to swallow my ego, my ego you know, scratch my head, 
and admit that I, I had guessed wrong with, with where the pain was actually coming from. And the next thing I would have injected would have been his hip. I would have put lidocaine in there to see if that took away the pain in the knee. Injecting lidocaine uh, is the gold standard diagnostic option if you're not 100% sure of what's causing the pain. Uh, and if the diagnostic picture isn't lining up with what you expect, then injecting lidocaine to confirm or refute that body part as the source of pain, particularly if you're going to even, even remotely consider surgery, it, it just, just makes a lot of sense, right, to make sure that you know what you're treating before you go ahead and actually treat it, especially with something uh, as, as invasive as surgery. All right, that's, that's, the, that's, that's our, our crazy patient story. Um, and the lesson that we can, the lessons that we can learn from it for, for today. I hope you've enjoyed the, this video. Uh, if you have, please press like and subscribe and uh, please help spread the word by, by telling your friends about it. As always, if you have any questions you'd like me to answer in a future video, or if you have any uh, comments for me, you can reach me at drcooper at princetonsjc.com or feel free to leave a question or a comment in the comment section. Thank you very much.